In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the inset to um, make uh, different kinds of textures. Uh, you can do a variety of textures by making some different texturing tool stamps, if you will. Um, I also am going to show you how you can do some pattern stamping. And then one other thing that I want to show here is how you can actually use it for piercing through. Um, this is sterling silver and uh, you can make some piercing stamps and, and do some patterns with those as well. So what I've done is basically made um, several different punches and stamps. I'll show you. Um, they're made out of either drill rod or old uh, beading tools or whatever I have. Um, this one, for example, was made as a pattern stamp and was made from an old beading tool, but uh, it's already hardened, so I did have to grind it with uh, uh, some diamond burrs and, ha and, and that. A uh, drill rod or some kind of a tool steel that you can harden, then you can go ahead and do all of your uh, cutting and text make your texturing and then go ahead and, and harden and then of course draw them back um, So I've got several different ones for either texturing or uh, Making you know again some pattern stamping um, There's another little kind of a half moon for making stamping patterns, so what I'm going to do first is show you using a just a, a rounded polished punch to give a a peened look very common texture um and i'm going to be doing all this on sterling silver um i did we did do several bands the other day uh, in my friend's workshop uh they wanted that peened pattern and uh, in white gold and, and it worked just fine so so um what you can do is you can come in and hit it and do a very random style pattern. You can speed up, slow down, you know, you can hit it one hit at a time if you want. Um, you can, you know, really control your, your pattern or the outcome of it if if that's what you prefer to do. So you can come in here and if you wanna, you know, even come over the edge, you can come in and hit it one punch. You can hit it several times in the same spot and move the metal around. So again, you know, it's up to you, uh, but you do have the ability to to control the pattern, you know, very easily. The next uh, texturing punch that I have is a um, kind of what you would kind of like on the end of a watchmaker's um, hammer or riveting hammer. And actually you could use it as a small riveter too. Um, which is basically just that wedge shape, rounded and kind of polished. And again, how you do the pattern, you know, different angles you hold it, speeds or randomly, randomly speeding and slowing down. Holding it in one place to really make a a deep line um, going back and forth. You can crisscross it if you want. You can use a tool like this to kind of do a chasing line if you want. So, you know, lots of different variations. Hold it on a on an angle and make different kind of marks. So you can do a lot of different things with that. 
And then uh, I also made one with um, a lot of uh, teeth in it, already kind of cut in. And with that one, you hold it at an angle. So you can see you can get a variety of different textures and of course you know you can go back through and after you've got a lot of texture you can do some you know burnishing of highlights and then you know uh, even combinations of, of different okay now the next one is a pattern stamp um, it's a little crescent shape um, I'm gonna turn this the other way so you can see it better. So you can do those and you know, one hit. Um, go along and make a pattern that way. You could use this also as a, as a texturing tool as well. You could come in and, you know, do something a little bit different. Now, the other thing is that if you want to, and of course you can do the same thing with a hammer, but, and a punch, but if you do it this way, you can really control your depth and stuff. Make sure you get it where you want, hit it several times and go really deep or lighter depending on you know again what what it is that you you want what the end result will be then i have uh this other kind of a almost a native american motif looking stamp that i made um and with some of these you just kind of create them depending on you know what you might have in mind so now the bigger with the bigger stamp it may take a couple of hits to to really get the pattern in there okay but again you can also control then um, how deep you want everything And if you, um, that's the other thing, when you do it with a hammer, a lot of times you get a double strike, uh, or you may end up with a, uh, you know, like here, for example, it's a little not quite as deep as, as it is there, and trying to come back in and, and line your punch back up again with a hammer is difficult, uh, and then, you know, hit it in the same thing and deepen it and make sure, it, you know, it lines up makes it easier this way and of course you can you can go as deep as you want you see it doesn't bounce off so you can make them quite deep if you want um, and you can take these kind of stamps and you know do the other side and make a kind of a mirror reverse pattern and then I have a little diamond shape that you could stamp in the middle.
Um, you could you can do a lot of different things. I mean, you can just play around and come up with these different uh, ideas. Again, uh, something like this could be used for texture. You could use it by itself. You can go really deep with them. You could do something along that line. So, uh, again, it's kind of the sky's the limit on those kinds of things. And All right, so now I'm going to show you how to pierce through. This is half millimeter thick sterling silver. I made this punch from uh, an old beading tool. I had to use diamond to grind it um, because it's already hardened. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. It just was, I, you know, had it laying around. Uh, you can see that you need those, you need everything to be at least straight up and down, if not coming in a little bit so that you have some clearance for, so that when you, you know, you can punch through. Um, okay, and then I do that into this, this is hard maple, it's the end grain of hard maple. Uh, it's got enough resistance, uh, it'll give a little bit, but then, you know, it lets you, it lets the piece punch through, so let's go ahead and do a couple. Um, What I usually do is I start in at an angle once I have the, the stamp lined up where I want. And I kind of rock it back and forth as I'm pushing down and then a little bit side to side. Just giving it, you know, steady pressure. And you don't need, you know, a real fast pulse rate. You can go a little faster. now. It went through, I could feel it, and I don't know if you could hear the difference there. Um, so there's your piece. And by the way, those can be dug out and used for overlays and things like that. Um, you know, if you wanted to purposely make some shapes and do the same thing just for th the purpose of having them for, you know, overlays, you could do that as well. Let me do another one. If you were trying to do some kind of a pattern, then you would have some layout lines. You can feel it and hear it as it as it comes through. So there's a, a second one, and let me do one in between up here. So there's a little pattern. Now, what happens then is if you're going to use the, the piece that you're piercing through as your, um, you know, if this is a design of some kind of a pin or brooch or something like that, you, you know, you have to planish this back to flatten it out. And you have, at this point, I'm just going to use a, uh, a hammer that I have and just do it on the wood. It doesn't take much just to kind of knock it back. And then you have your pad and pad turn your your sanding and what have you then you can flatten things out even more 